let's do some more things on our text files. We've created a text file, we've uh, did a word count. Let me just clear and show that what I have. I've got two files, one of them's empty. My file contains some, some content. Instead of using a text editor to, to, to display the file, there are some other commands to display. A very simple one is called cat. Cat is not an animal, but it is a program that shows the contents of a file. It's short for concatenate. It simply prints the contents of the file on the screen. Cat, followed by the file name, prints it on the screen. You may have noticed in my case, because there are lots of lines on that file, when I did the cat, I missed the first lines. So instead of using cat, sometimes we can use less. Less, again, shows the contents of the file on the screen, but page by page. And now I can scroll up and down with my arrow keys. So it's got the top lines, and I scroll down, and I get to the bottom of the file. So less is, a, is slightly more advanced than cat. Cat just shows it, less shows it, but, but has page breaks. Cue to quit less, like the man page, cue to quit. You want to just see the start of a file, the head of a file, head. By default shows the first 10 lines of the file, or the end, the tail. Tail shows the last 10 lines of the file. You want to just get the first three lines of the file. Head minus N3, my file. Or the last five lines. You can actually do minus five as a shortcut. Minus N3, or simply minus three, shows that selection of, or that number of lines are the head or tail. Cat shows the full file, less shows the file page by page, head shows the first end lines, tail shows the last end lines. The reason we have all these commands on files is because many programs in Linux and Unix systems are configured via files. The operating system configuration is not done in a registry or a separate database, but in plain text files. And similar for many applications. And many programs on the command line use text files to do processing. So it's useful to be able to process those text files. Let's copy some files. CP to copy. Copy my file.txt to new.txt. And we now have a copy of that file. Copy doesn't have to go to the same directory. I can copy my file back a directory and change it, the name to another file. And if we look in the higher directory, we see that new file. So copy uses a source and destination. The source and destination can include the, the path, the directory of the file. What if I want to copy another .txt into my current directory? How would I do that? I'm in ITS352. In the higher directory, there's a file called another .txt, and I want to copy it into this directory. Copy another .txt from the higher directory. What's the destination? The destination is this directory. The shortcut for this directory is dot. Copy 
another .txt from the higher directory into this directory. And we now have a copy. So be careful, or make note that I used a dot there. When we do a copy, we must always specify source and destination. Sometimes we can use the dot to represent this current directory. Move is similar to copy. Move new.txt upper level. New.txt is gone from this directory. It's now in the higher level directory. Move moves the file. We can move it back. I move from the higher directory new.txt into this directory. Moving a file is also the same as renaming a file. You want to change the name? Here I simply rename u.txt to xyz.txt. So we can use move to rename. Note that we can rename files and the names of files in Linux, the extension doesn't matter. In the examples I've used, I've used .txt because we, we knew they were text files, but the extension is not important. If I change the name and use a different extension, it doesn't change the format of the file. XYZ is still the same text file as before. Contains some text. I can move XYZ to XYZ dot doc. It's not a Microsoft Word document, it's still just a text file. Extensions are not necessary and are not necessarily interpreted. So we can use any extension, but it's common sense to, or common practice to use an extension that is informative to the user. And the last thing, we can remove files. RM followed by the file name. Or let's remove all of our text files. Star.txt. When I say text files, I mean those that I've given the extension .txt. RM removes or deletes files. There is no recycle bin. There is no trash on the command line. If you delete a file, it's gone. So you need to be careful. In the graphical interface, there is a trash bin, but we're not using that. When you delete a file here, it's no longer available. So be careful when you remove files, especially if you use a wildcard like star, rm star, delete everything. If you have a thousand files in that directory, they're all gone. Sometimes uh, the permissions on directories mean you can't delete everything, but you can do some damage if you can delete, delete your own files accidentally. Before we have a break, let's do the last few things on files. Let's uh, find some files on our file system. I'll go home. Clear. I'm in my home directory. 